few complications with selection there? Yeah, it's been it always is this this year and the last few years, particularly with with COVID and everything else that goes on. So, work our way through that, and we'll um, uh, we'll, we'll be okay. So, Mackenzie, is he good enough to pick because of the concussions and sort of the limited plays had recently? Um, short answer is yes, and we're going to. Okay. So he's going to play. So the you know his Trent's had good build up as far as training goes, and um, yeah, he's had a little interruption, but he was ready to go. Was it two, three and weeks ago now? So it's not like he's not ready to play football. So he'll be fine. He's had good results for us. Sorry, who comes in for Bird Jones? Uh, we're, again, we're, what will happen? We'll mix and match a little bit with what we do and, and how we go about it. So um, obviously, Marty Fredericks played last week. When, when Dan wasn't around, we can got the option to move Dan back, and Marty's in the side too. So more likely it'll be similar type of mix that we'll have and use Dan a little bit more as a defender, I'd imagine. Every week it's a rut question. There's another one this week. Why'd you choose Finlayson ahead of Hayes? Oh, I think it's been pretty simple for us that we've been getting the results that we need to get and want to get with the current structure that we've been using and the support around ground level's been important to us. Sam, Sam's really cleared. Sam absolutely is a really good young ruckman who's got clarity exactly on what he's trying to work on. I and mean, until he, he can get those things at a level that we need them at, Sam will, will continue to develop as a young ruckman, which we're excited about. So Finlayson, that advantage of his follow-up work and advantages around the field gets it. Yeah, out. yeah, there's all, all those things, but he's also been getting his share of the hit-outs and with Charlie as available to us as well, we've got some great flexibility in what we can do. We play a side this week that's you know only got a couple of tall forwards as well, so can we can free up some other options. So a couple of weeks ago you told us you wanted to get your forwards in the most dangerous roles, so it becomes more challenging again to get a score. How do you work around that one again? Oh, well... As, as we do every week, we, we, we use the pass that we've got available to us and we can certainly do that again this week. And you know, we get Travis to come back into the side as well, so that's another really big positive for us. Um, so that there's, some, there's some good reasons for us to be optimistic around what we can do in our front half. You saw Gold Coast in the first pre-season game. You've known them for a long while. How much more of a threat are they to as, as a final eight contender at the moment? Oh, they're, they're a big final eight contender, clearly, and they're five and one in their last six. And, Defensively, they've been really good. Their contest stuff, which we found out in the pre-season, was at a was at an improved level. And um, you know, to be fair to them, they've been able to get some personnel back that's had some consistency. They've had wits back in the ruck. You know, they've had Rail back. You know, they've, they've got some great consistency with the people they're using around the ball, and that 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 in lends itself to uh, better results. So you found that manic way to oppress and harass an opponent last week even more necessary for that against Gold Coast. Well, it's necessary every week, that's the hard part. I mean, there's not a game that's not necessary for, and sometimes you get it at a bit better level than you've had in the past. And last week we had it at a really high level. Gold Coast were at it also at a really high level. I think you've probably got, on form in the last six weeks, you've probably got the two best defensive teams having a crack at it. So it'll be a pretty, it'll be a pretty important part of the game, I'd imagine. How's the just placed it? Uh, he's not playing this week, so he'll be in a, you know, he's obviously out this week. It, we've got some optimism around how long that may be, but without putting a time frame on and saying he'll definitely play next week or the week after, we have to explore how he gets going and where he's at. But we're, you know, we're, we're reasonably optimistic that it, it shouldn't be too long. Have you got a time frame on Robbie yet? Okay. No, it's building Rob through a program that's allowing him to compete at the level he needs to and, and wants to. And uh, you know, the, All I'm really pleased to do is I've seen Robbie now train for a couple of weeks in a row where he had not trained for 10 weeks. Um, so we, we've got to be a little bit patient and Rob's also got to be a little bit patient because I know how much he wants to play. So we'll, we'll manage him the best way. When that right time is, sometimes it's taken out of your control and other times it's, it's within your control. And at the moment, we've got the control where we need it to be and that's really important for Robbie and us for the back half of the year. How impatient has he been though? You could imagine he's pretty... Oh, Competitive beast. <laughs> he wants to play and that's why he played like he did for as long as he did trying to get through and in the end, you know, he, he needs to be able to play like Robbie Gray and for us to give him that best chance is to give him some conditioning and get him in shape that allows him to do that. He's a really, really still a big part of what we want trying to do. So can when you see Wits dominant, their midfield now moves the ball so well, particularly with their hands outside of the contest, how do you plan or what do you work through on that one to get yourself in the right frame? Oh, no, it's no different to any game that we play. I mean, we played last week, you know, and, and every week we've played. Two weeks ago we played Richmond with two big ruckmen. So we're, we've had some experience around what that looks like and how it works. It, it, it's, it's just a fierce battle at ground level. You've got to be ready and you've got to, have, you've got to be ready to move into every contest the right way. You can't, you can't go there pre-planning anything. You don't go there going, oh, well, who's going to win the hitouts? Who's not going to win the hitouts? You just know that the game becomes live once it hits the floor. And for us, we've got to be first to move in those 
in those um, positions if we can possibly do that first. With Cleary and DBJ falling ill with COVID, good timing that Trent McKenzie's become available to you? Yeah, absolutely, it's good timing, and we haven't had a greatest run with our with our um, with our talls at any stage through this year, particularly Trent and and Cluz, you know, and we had a Lear for the first six weeks of the year as well. So, it's been a real juggling act for us right through the season with our tall backs, um, as it probably has been down the front end with Charlie coming back. So, um, we, look, we've got great coverage at the moment, and we're in you know we're in a lucky position that we can bring good players back into the team. Is there something good coming from the team being on edge? Do you find that that brings something extra out of them that they're always on edge, knowing that? Just can't afford to slip up at the moment. I think we're always on edge, but you know, because of the results and everyone's writing every result as, as a critical result, and it's, it's no different to us. We we also understand that we keep our focus on the week, and we know how important this week is. We can't afford to go away from that. If that brings a slightly better or different edge, I'm not quite sure about that because I think these blokes compete and prepare every game to play at an AFL level, and that means you have to be on edge. What's Hayes' reaction been to being overlooked the last three weeks? No, really, uh, look, understanding, disappointed in some ways, but understanding, he knows if he wasn't getting clarity on what he needs to get right and what he's working really hard on, and to Sam's credit, he's embracing that with Loeb's and working incredibly hard to, uh, to make some brown. Let's not forget he hadn't played an AFL game this year, he's played seven. It's a, a, quite a great effort for him to get to that point, and hopefully there's more to come this year as well for him. Yeah, Schofield and Burgoyne in the extended squad again. Yeah. How close are they? They're really close. Both boys are doing really well. Um, both boys have got um, what we consider really bright futures. Um, you know, they've, they've got an opportunity, I'm sure, at some stage coming. And, uh, and whether that's this weekend or not, we'll work through that and make sure we get the right decisions. Has he come out a little bit quicker than you thought, Chase? There's not much of him. <laughs> he's not huge, is he? <laughs> He doesn't carry a lot of weight around, but he's uh, like he's played such good footy at, at Sanford level as a halfback flanker, and you know he's um, clearly with what's going on this week, it pushes him even closer with 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 opportunities. So um, both boys are doing well, and both improved. You know, Targe has had an, an an interrupted run in his first couple of years, and now he's actually got a bit of a run at it, and he's played at some really consistent levels. And and Jason, his first year, he's. Even last year when he was playing from a junior age, he was stepped up at Sanford level and played really well. He's done that again this year. We think that every level he's jumped up to, he's, he's looked more than comfortable. And, you know, I think he's got, you know, he's got a fair bit of belief and confidence in himself that size won't be his issue. Not this week for either of those two? Or, I mean, you said well, we've still got a bit to work through. We've just gone through COVID and we've just had Darcy come out. So uh, give, us a, give us a little bit of time, we'll make sure of that. But um, certainly if we've got a debutante, we'll be first to let you know. Okay, consider, we've been told don't look at Lockie Jones as a defender, but because of those defenders you've lost, is it vital you put him back there this week? Because no. you know what you well, get at half back with him? It's not vital, but it's an option. I think it's definitely an option. What we're trying to do with Lockie is create a game that allows him to play, and we played him only a few weeks back in the sample in the midfield. So we think he's getting great education in, in three areas of the game that gives him an opportunity to be in the team wherever we need him. And if this week means that we need him down back because of our shortage, we, will, we would take that opportunity. You feel like fortunate, can they have got that defensive, I guess, experience? Like you've got a clear replacement and a Darcy replacement, Houston and um, Mackenzie. You feel fortunate to actually be able to call on them rather than disrupt yeah. the cohesion, I guess? It feels better than what I felt at the start of the year. Well, we didn't feel that fortunate, but um, at the moment we've got people who are fit and, and, and ready to play in that area, as you say, but we haven't got everything covered perfectly at the moment. We've got some people still missing. So that's the benefit of the squad mentality you've been building? Well, hopefully that's exactly why you do it, to, to give yourself some flexibility and play where we need to play. And what I've loved about the boys, and Lockie included, is wherever, just wherever. I'll play wherever. I'm happy to be in the team. That's what, you know, it's a great attitude to have. How much time will Charlie spend in the middle taking the right taps as well? Not that long, I hope. Not that long, but um, he'll, spend, he'll spend some moments in there when, obviously, Jeremy and whoever else we can use through there uh, are not, not on the ground. So Charlie would have to step up in those moments more often than not. But we have got some great flexibility. As I said, we've got Todd, we've got Charlie, we've got a Lear down the other end, so we've got some people who can actually play right. Is there something changing with the way you want to use George Arties? Have you thought how he's best in this new mix? No, we're trying to grow Mitch to play in a side that's got more than two talls in it. So, and Mitch is not a tall, Mitch is 192, who's got some great wheels. So we're learning to, and, and educating him on how to play a bit more of a higher forward role when he needs to. And, but also, you know, we explored last week and talked about the opportunity from playing on the wing. So again, like all our players, we're, we're not pigeonholing them too much. You know, obviously with the change with, with Bryn coming out of the side, Jeremy having to, to assume the ruck, that allows Mitch to probably be a slightly taller forward again. How's Tegel pulled up after his set? Yeah, pretty good, to be honest. He's, um, He's all repaired and ready to go and he's moving around he's out of the sling so it's pretty optimistic around how it's going but I'm sure it'll be four, five, six weeks, whatever that exactly be. I think what I do know is he's very good at TikTok though by all reports so <laughs> it's not worrying him that much. <laughs>
Him and Trent McKenzie, are, they're forming a great team at the moment. 